Oh, I can't thank you so much. But you, you don't know what's going on there. Do you know what's about that? the Coral Castle? Yeah, in that Florida? guy. Yeah, it's fascinating. That's all he would say. He figured it out, but no, he didn't say how. Yeah, he, <laughs> this guy by himself. Have you ever seen this? Yeah, I've seen it's it. It's amazing. This guy by himself moved all these giant stones and made this beautiful, like, it's like a just giant art piece, right? All of coral that he cut. He built all that shit, man. He stacked all those giant pieces on top of each but other. But he's like, so, but he's saying he, he used some magic to do that. Is that what he's saying? He's saying he figured out, uh, let's see the quote here, he understood the laws of weight and leverage well, and he also, that he discovered the secrets of the pyramids. Whoa. He did this in like, uh, I think this was built by 1923. Wow. Maybe someone should have talked to homie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're all yeah, be a great. Guy. I feel like, hey, man, what do you know? He figured out to levitate stones. Okay. Let's oh, let's have tourists come by. The wackiest theory that I've ever heard. And the first time I actually heard it, I heard it from Eddie Griffin, and I thought I thought he was just having fun. You know, he's saying the pyramids were made with sound. Yeah. And then um someone was uh describing one of the ways, like a theoretical way to move massive amounts of weight, and it would be with sound waves. But you would have to have some unknown technology to, like if you right. were to move, you know those, um, those fucking, those ones that they find, those obelisks that yeah. haven't even been picked up yet, but they were cutting them and they were, you know, something cracked in the yeah. process and so they abandoned it. There's a few of them that are so big. They're so crazy. It, it just, you can't even imagine someone being able to move it today with right. modern equipment. It's yeah. Like, what the fuck was going on? Right. Imagine if they had some sort of super sophisticated way of manipulating the environment around an object. Sure. And you can move objects around. Like, Dude. What, what, what would that be? You, if you, I sent you that. Did you see that weird fucking gear that, that they say? They say it's for incense, but it's not. It's like some kind of rotor. It's called a... Uh, Jamie, I'm sorry to ask, but yeah. if you look at it's like a ancient Egypt uh, propeller or something. It looks like a propeller, but it's one of the theories is it was used as some engine or something. I mean, you see these yeah. f fragments of things all over the place, and weirdly in Egypt, they don't you have to tell that me thing. This thing. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. Look at that. They say it was for incense, but to incense. me that looks like something from an engine or like a something inside a lawnmower or something. <laughs> you know, it, it could have been for incense. I mean, I don't know. People have actually like uh, 3D printed it and used it like a propeller. Really? Yeah. And or, it works. Yeah, like if like if you shoot water through it, it goes super fast. Huh. Yeah, the Sabu disc. That's what it is. It's so weird. There's, you know, the, the problem is when things are that old, there's not much left. And the stuff that we're getting is yeah. just the rock stuff. Right. It's like if everything was removed from all of our cities, everything except stones, it would be so confusing. Sure. You would get to a few cornerstones that have like those brass signs on them. Yeah. Maybe you could read those. Right. But if, they were, if everything else deteriorated, which apparently it would. If you gave the earth enough thousands of years, yeah. all of our cities would just dissolve. Right. Mel Except, but those stones would stay. Well, I and also, wouldn't there be like, we've forged metal that's just going to be sitting there forever. There'd be a bunch of Coke cans. Yeah. There's How many years do you think it would take to like make the Empire State Building corrode into dust? Oh, man. I love doing your fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing it with you. <laughs> it's so fun. It's so I, fun. How many, it would take, you know, like... How many thousands of years? Thousands. It would be, wouldn't it be a million years at least for that thing to corrode to nothing? It's going to take so long. But the, what about a, like a glass and metal structure like World Trade Center? That seems like it wouldn't last that long. Well, get the a little... beams. The steel beams. Yeah. You know? Like how long before those rot away? Because it doesn't seem like we find a whole lot of fucking metal... Right. That we know that humans have tampered with. That's you, you know, there's no stainless steel from twelve thousand years ago. Right. Yeah. No. What if they had it? What I, if they had it twenty thousand years ago? It's just it's all gone. It's just all corroded. Is just, that possible? I don't know. I mean, this to get back to ancient aliens. <laughs> <laughs> 
to because I think that's a big piece of the puzzle to get back to that. Uh, it could be that, like, you know, the stuff Eddie Bravo would talk about, the Anunnaki. Yeah. That they, like, were some kind of crop. Yeah. They, we, they except we, we, the crop is technology. It grows out of the planet, get, gets to some certain amount, and then it's time for the harvest. They come, they take it all. They scoop it up, beam it up, take it all, build some new pyramids as, like, a mark of, like, okay— this lets us know how long it's been since we've been here. And then, you know, then come back in another 15,000 years, wipe it all out again and let it grow again. You know, it could be something like that. And which is, yeah, in that case, any everything could just be evaporated. They just might do it the way what we wipe chalkboards clean. Just wipe it clean, leave a few there, leave some of our, like, emissaries to, like, Give them the new information that we want. Come back in another 10, 12,000 years and see what they've come up with. <laughs> keep trying. <laughs> keep trying. Keep trying. Don't let them nuke each other and just keep trying. It's like sheep. You know, the way you just you herd them. You herd them. And yeah. when they get enough fur, you just take it off. And the sheep doesn't know what's fucking happening. I mean, it, it's so confused, I'm sure. But probably that's what, what, what happens. Do you ever read the Zechariah Sitchin books? You ever read any of those books? I, I never read them. I've only heard about it. I read one. It's wild. I read parts of another one, but the one that I read was, I think it's called The Twelfth Planet, and it's all about this theory of this ancient planet called Nibiru. It's yeah. outside of our solar system, and it's in an elliptical orbit, and it comes inside of Earth. By the way, don't say I believe this. I'm not saying I believe this. Don't. I believe it. <laughs> every 3,600 <laughs> years. The story is like every 3,600 years or so, it comes in between like Mars and Jupiter, and it comes near us, and it, they 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 hop off. Yeah, the 12th planet. 